Hey guys, so I'm back in Europe. It's strange to be back and the same feelings are coming out of me. Uh, the feelings that I have about uh, the excess of life here. But I'm working on it as best I can to, to accept it and, and to be part of it because this is the way the world is for now. So there's no point in feeling any inner conflict over what I'm seeing around me. Uh, making an acceptance with what reality is, is to me and to, I think, all persons who would teach decent meditation, the goal of meditation. You need to find a peace with your reality. And when you find that, you can find a, a inner tranquility in yourself. And this leads on to something that I feel like I should make clear. And I've had a few people uh, come at me about my views and the way I approach the modern church. Now, I understand that sometimes I allow my emotions to get involved when I speak about these persons. Because I'm a human and I'm not perfect, this is the problem we have with the planet is humans are flawed. And because humans are flawed, the things we do are flawed, which includes religion and includes all religions within there, all the way from Buddhism to Christianity to Islam to the Hindu Sikh faith, or whichever, Zoroastrianism, paganism, humans are in there. So there's always going to be faults and flaws. But this is my point and what I hope to convey, whether I do it in a, a good way at all times or not, is that it's about time humanity started teaching the skills to its populace, that, that we began for those who seek spirituality and seek God to teach physical skills to one another on how we achieve an acceptance with and a union with reality. Most persons I meet who are attacking me from the Christian faith, they don't have that. And I actually feel for them because they need that. We all need that. And because of that, because praying to somebody up in the sky does not give you the physical tools you need to find a perfect union with your reality, to find an acceptance with your reality. And with that, allow you to find inner peace and inner tranquility, which in turn allows you to see other matters of life with a little more clarity instead of needing to be taught or told by someone, then if we could achieve that for billions of us on the planet or even hundreds of millions of us, we would change the planet irreversibly forever in a positive way. We truly would. And these institutions who have people calling out to someone like Jesus, who clearly told us how to find that. He told us how to find that union with reality. He told us how to do it. And he used, encoded in the word of God, as it said, Eastern mysticism. They used, encoded in there, the seven energy centers. They used the idea of turmoil before you find that union. And when you find that, you find the tranquility with the present moment, with the reality that you live in. Now, most persons who are calling out to Jesus, they are overlooking the instructions. It's like leaving instructions on how to ride a bicycle and always reading the instructions and then telling people because of that, you know how to ride the bicycle, but you've never gotten on one. You've never gotten on the bicycle or, or seen how your balance is when you do. The practical side of it is completely missed and Reading the instructions of a bicycle does not mean you can ride the bicycle. And I am sure that Jesus would say the same thing. F reading the instructions of that man and praising him for leaving them and leaving it there without physically going into it yourself is a waste of time. It doesn't mean that you're, you're achieving what you need to achieve to commune with God as well as what you can. Now, I'm not here to offend. This is not why I do it. 
I do what I do because I have a very strong, I've had a realization and belief about this problem we have on the planet with this literal interpretation of the book and calling out to a man in the sky to come and fix it for us. Because most persons then, then don't go within to find the union in themselves to find acceptance of the reality they live in. And so they have a conflict within themselves. And I see these persons, I know literal Christians like this, and I know is I know Muslims like this as well. And I actually have Hindu friends who are like this as well. And I know I have friends of all faiths. I have friends of the Jain faith as well. And they said to me, I'm more Jain than they are when I spoke to them once. Because I do more of what their faith tells you you must do than what they do. Because we aren't all perfect. For all we get born into a label, we achieve what we achieve. And because humans are flawed, then all of the religions are flawed too. However, all I want to do is get people to embrace the instructions on how the physical practices, on how to find acceptance with your reality. Now, all of the persons I know who are involved in these religions and don't have any physical training on how to meditate, on, on fasting and on cleanliness and on uh, healthy living and correct dietary choices, and on the movement of the human body, which we call exercise, or indulging in something else, you know, like you can say it's yoga even. And if they don't have these disciplines, or if they have but a few of these disciplines, when you ask them to sit still, their idea of relaxation is actually turmoil. They begin thinking of the negative things, they begin thinking of their problems. And so they reach out to something which stops them from having to think about themselves. And when they do that, they reach for TV or mindless media. And it's the manipulation of those things that create our reality as it is by this global elite. They understand that you're going to reach out to those places because they understand that you're not trained how to use your internal workings. So they understand that you don't enjoy your own company. So they know that you're not going to sit peacefully and quietly within yourself and meditate on, on the world around you and, and what you can do to start achieving your goals and your dreams from within yourself. You're going to reach for something which ends you feeling depressed and conflicted with your inner self because they, they're going to give you something like media, like TV, etc. And because you can't spend time with yourself. You're going to reach out and grab something and they're going to dangle a different reality for you to grab onto. And always in doing that, it's going to be a type of reality that allows them to encapsulate their power and dreams. Now, what you have there is a major problem with each person because when pe persons can't sit quietly with themselves, when they can't do that, and their, the aspect of their consciousness, which is questioning, is always picking on themselves, then the first realization you must come to is the problem that you're facing there. That problem is a collection of your own misgivings, your own perceptions, that you feel like a victim because this happened to you instead of feeling like you're a student because this happened to you and taught you something. And it's fixing that flawed perception on everything, which is what is a major role in meditation. When you achieve that, that point in yourself where things that happen to you become a lesson and don't make you a victim, when you achieve the point where you can accept your reality without complaining, without mourning, without feeling like it's, oh, why me, why this? We all have our problems. No one is free from the burden of problems on the planet. Nobody. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how spiritually in tune you are or spiritually trained you are. It, it doesn't matter how detached from reality you are. You're going to have problems. It's the nature of our reality. So your internal psychology in meditation is what needs to be worked on so you can become tranquil and you'll have achieved it when you can sit peacefully and sit quietly and predominantly the thing that happens is you enter a place of tranquility and acceptance and union with the reality that we live in 
if when you sit still you start having troubles and, and that voice in your head tells you you've got this problem, that problem, this, and you made this mistake 10 years ago, you made this mistake, what would have happened if I'd done this, what will happen tomorrow? Then you have work to do and you have not achieved that position, but where, where, where you can have that inner peace within yourself. And that's a, goal, that, that's a route we all must walk. This is very apparent if you, if you read into Buddhism. Now, the problem is, as I say, Christianity is not teaching that. It's not showing anybody how to do that. Certain sects of Christianity do, though, like Gnosticism. They teach you practical means on how, instead of calling out and then sitting there and feeling broken, because this is what's happening. People are not at, at peace with themselves. And they call out and nothing happens. And it slowly chips away at the faith people have in God. Because they say, how can God be such a monster that he allows there to be murder and war and, and, and pedophilia and all these dark things? How can it be? And they begin to turn their backs because they've sat in church every Sunday for years on end saying, God, please, please change this. And then something bad happens to their family and they say, well, what is this God? Because the person who did something bad to their family more than likely never found any tools on how to not be an animal. Because the largest institution in the West which is supposed to present us with a, a route to God does not present any practical tools to its congregations on how to not be an animal. It only tells them that they are not worthy and that they must ask for someone else to do it for them. And this is in direct contradiction to what that someone else said to do. And this is my point. This is why I hope that persons who are feeling deflated with Christianity or persons who are in, indulging in Christianity and other religious texts which I share, my esoterics on predominantly Christianity, but persons who are inside that that they can come to a point where they say, I, I'm seeking God, but it's not quite working out. I'm filled with doubts and I'm, I'm filled with inner turmoil. And that maybe I can trigger in those persons to go and look and to say that there are answers out there. There are practical tools and means for you to not feel that way. By cleansing yourself, by purging yourself in meditation, you don't need to have to switch on your TV because you can't stand when you're confronted with yourself what is going on. You can't stand the negativity within there so you reach out to something. And when I can achieve that, even in one person, I've achieved something grand because when one person doesn't reach for those things when their mind is not still, when one person, instead of reaching for something to stop them from realizing the problems they are facing psychologically and spiritually, and instead they, they face those problems and they overcome them, overcome uh, and find a perfect union with reality to the best of their ability, as perfect as it can be for them. And when a person chooses that path instead of the path of distraction, then you stop people from being controlled by these maniacs who are destroying slowly but surely this planet and are creating so much suffering in doing so. It's a many-layered thing, and my hope is not to put down religion. My hope is to say, have Christianity, that's great, but somebody within there, start teaching people how to feel good within themselves. Start teaching people how to give birth to the Christ inside themselves, where they find a state of utter tranquility with the present moment but the tranquility and acceptance with the reality they live in. And then they become a force for change. They become some, someone who can, who can do something instead of just someone who can wait for someone to do it for them or someone who is in need of God but is not able to find God in themselves or share God with others and in doing so dilute the concept of God and push people away from it. When I was younger, the people preaching from a literal Bible 
God said this and God said that and there was a great flood and he just turned me off God completely. There was no love in these people most of the time. Many of them there was. Don't get me wrong, I'm not stereotyping. But look at the world and we have a Christian, literalist Christian church in every village, town and city. It doesn't work. And I just want it to work. And the way it can work is by doing what Jesus did, not by doing what the church tells us to do. Or if the church is going to tell us what to do, let them tell us the practical tools. Let, us tell them, let, let them tell us how it is that we can let our eye be single so our whole body fills with light. Let us find out from the church how it is that we can see God face to face in the place called Peniel. Let them teach it. Instead of keeping it locked away in the Vatican archives and in the wisdom of the leaders of the Vatican institution. They know why the largest statue in Vatican City is a pine cone. They know that the pine cone represents the pineal. And they know that you can see God face to face in the place called pineal. But they choose a different message. And my point in speaking against this side of things is not to tarnish all Christians with the same brush. This is not what I'm doing. But it's to help people to see that there are many ways and that this impractical way of hoping that sitting there like this and shouting out that someone's going to help you is not a guaranteed solution but meditation and discipline of the flesh to find a perfect acceptance with reality so you can move forward with things without feeling like a victim because you have an inner tranquility that is a guaranteed solution and esoterics point you on that path which means the bible points you on that path it want god wanted you to walk that path just hope that more people do because I've been in parts of the world where it's needed in the West and in Africa I've seen it firsthand from my drug taking days I look back every person there needed God and that's the same in every town and city in the West but no one's looking for God anymore in these dated stories that don't work but when I show people what these stories are supposed to convey, I've had hundreds of people tell me that they found God again. Maybe that is something that the church can do too. If they ever find it in themselves to share the truth, rather than share the message which suits their needs. So, what's up guys? I need the moon.